Hey everyone, Nick Engvall here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you about some of the people that make the sneaker history community and this podcast possible. It's more important than ever to think about who you give your money to when you're buying clothing to go with your kicks. Our friends at Guilty Goods started their brand with a goal of giving back, especially to the communities that make sneaker culture possible. With every purchase from Guilty Goods, at least 10% of the proceeds are donated to organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, Movement for Black Lives, and many more. You can save 30% on your order by using the code HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us. Again, that's HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us for 30% off, and you can feel good about your purchase knowing you're supporting a meaningful cause. Sneakers are all about presentation, and if you're like me, displaying your kicks at home or in the office is just as important as when they're on your feet. Sneaker Throne makes sneaker display cases featuring customizable LED lights, drop side cases to showcase the entire side of the shoe, not just the heel or the toe, the whole shoe. They've also got display cases for trading card collectors and hat collectors. To me, it's the perfect way to display your collection. You can save at least 10% on your Sneaker Throne order by using the code HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. That's HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. If you're a Patreon supporter or a member of our Discord community, you already know about Kicks with V Hot Sauce and his small batch locally sourced hot sauce. V has been one of the biggest supporters of sneaker history and the podcast since the early days. and He's currently the defending champion in our Community Trivia Nights competition. Kicks with V Hot Sauce has been a huge hit with the community. You can save 10% on your order by using the code SNEAKERHISTORY10 at KICKSWITHVHOTS.COM. That's SNEAKERHISTORY10 at KICKSWITHVHOTS.COM. Now, you're probably here because you like sneakers, and if you join the Discord, you know our community is about so much more than that. Whether it's the marathon-like community calls, trivia night debates, the in-person meetups, we're just sharing our favorite experiences. We found that although we have such different backgrounds, we all have some unexpected shared passions. Not only does the entire community look out for each other when it comes to releases, we're like a support group for life in general. You can join the Discord community for free by heading to the show notes of this episode. After you're done listening to this episode, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Now let's get into today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Prospect, the premier streetwear brand and sneaker boutique based in sunny San Diego, California. Home to a curated selection of classic footwear from brands like Asics, New Balance, Puma, Saucony, as well as local and globally known streetwear brands like Belief, Ellist, Rottweiler, Stussy, and more, not to mention their own prospect label and the iconic Just a Kid from Dago collection. Sneaker and streetwear enthusiasts can experience Prospect's curated boutique through their online store, and now you, Sneaker History listeners, can get 10% off all orders from the Prospect website with the code HISTORY10. That's promo code HISTORY10 at prospectsd.com. That's P-R-S-P-C-T-S-D.com. Jordan trying to shake off starts. Oh, what a move! Oh, Nick Brown changed with no regard for human life. Five seconds. Bryant for the win. Oh, what a shot! Oh, what a shot! Oh, what a shot! Iverson against Gill, the crowd on its feet. Allen for the win. Welcome yeah! to the Sneaker History Podcast. What up? What up? Welcome to the Sneaker History Podcast with my guys Mike and Rowett to talk some kicks. What's good, fellas? How you doing? <sighs> making it man i'm trying to eat healthier and i just i just ate uh in replacing wings with cauliflower it was good but i just feel unfulfilled it's but, not the uh, same mike please don't kid not, yourself that's not but i'm trying to be better <laughs> it hurts <laughs> it's it's uh it's something we all strive for though you know? yes yeah <laughs> yeah you're, you're setting a good example for future child mike but right now i'm, I'm sure like, it tear. kind of hurts in the moment a yeah, single tear <laughs> But I'm well, sure watch, it's a tearful. I watched my son and my wife eat wings. Cause I was like, well, you're pregnant. You need to eat whatever. And you're growing. You need to eat whatever. I'm just like. <laughs> Looking like a little rascal at the end of the bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shucks. That's pretty much how I felt. Like, oh, man, but whatever. <laughs> I, I guess I achieved something today, right? Yes, you did. You got our respect. I was going to say. <laughs> This weekend, um, because in Portland, this new chain opened up, and I think I may have spoken about this before in the podcast, and if I have, sorry, we tend to repeat ourselves, Bonchan, which is, I guess, this Korean fried chicken joint that's opening up fire wings. Absolute, like, I I have this internal debate, if you want to call it that, where, like, who's got the best fried chicken? And for me, it's always been Popeye's since they've entered that field because the availability of it and then just also the sheer taste. But Bonchan's... 
that that is a contender to the throne. It's just they're in their underground backpack phase where if you know, you know, but a lot of us don't know. But get familiar in the next two to five years. Yo, they're contender. You need to come down to Houston because there's some other like Asian owned establishments that chicken game is like on Super Saiyan three. It's stupid. Of course. <laughs> Like, it's a versatile meat. Like, that's the thing I always tell people. It's just, like, you hear these different countries, like, oh, Brazil does beef really good, or Argentina does beef real good, and so-and-so does pork. Everybody's got a fire chicken dish, and that's why chicken is the king of the meats. I don't care what Jim Harbaugh said. It is not a nervous. <laughs> nervous meat, it is not. Yeah, man, I haven't had banchan, but when, there's one actually fairly close to us here in Sacramento, so it's it's definitely on the list of oh, fantastic. Of yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. I mean, so I mean, other than other than, I mean, I guess banchan being in the neighborhood explains how your day was or how you how you're doing <laughs> today, and wrote. Yeah, that's the thing. I haven't had it in about ten days, but it's just like it's worth sharing the gospel of Hanjan in a sense. You still can taste it. I saw what Mike did, and I felt bad for Mike, so I'm literally throwing him a figurative chicken bone. I can taste it mentally. <laughs> I mean, Mike, I think I think the key to a successful buffalo cauliflower is just not eating it with around around people that are eating chicken buffalo wings. You oh. Know? <laughs> right, but what made it worse, I cooked the wings and the cauliflower, so I'm sitting there watching the wings fry, I'm like, huh, I'm sure they look good over here. <laughs> but yeah, I do, I use that uh, you gotta knock some off the truck, so to speak. I'm like, oh, what? how did this end up in my cauliflower? Oh, yeah, where did this come from? I mean, I tasted one small <laughs> one, like, it was literally the smallest one in there, just make sure it was cooked. And I was like, alright, well, you guys enjoy this. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the buffalo cauliflower. I mean, it doesn't replace, but yeah, it's good. It's yeah, it's good. It's a it's a nice it's a nice alternative. You know, if you ro add it to the rotation, I don't I don't think it replaces anything no, in the rotation. It doesn't replace, but it's <laughs> definitely a solid addition. I just want to know when cauliflower became the versatile vegetable that it is today, because I feel everything has a cauliflower yeah. substitute. Yeah. And th this versatility just wasn't there back in when we were kids. So, I mean, kudos to you, big cauliflower lobby. You've clearly pushed your agenda <laughs> in all the right places. Yeah, it was like cauliflower, Seriously. eggplant, and black bean are like, you can basically make them into anything. Yes. But cauliflower is like the, the, the shining of the group right now for some reason. Yeah, yep. Speaking of uh, shining for the group right now, I think uh, – I think we should just get into the rocking and copping because Ro, it's got some heat to share with people. Um, You're first. Oh, man. thank you so much. I don't know <laughs> if this is heat, but the Dodger Seven, the baseball seven, we're going to call these the Chelsea Seven because my beloved oh. Chelsea FC made it to the yep. semis of the Champions League. But this is a fire shoe. I'm not even a baseball guy, and I certainly want to pay respect to the boss, so to speak, where we're team giants here on sneaker history <laughs> with a dabbling of Houston Astros, but Chelsea FC seven, sorry, LeBron, but these are pretty fire. I was happy to hit on them. And the other shoe that's hopefully coming soon because I was inspired by the vision quest that Michael recently went on with his cosmic <laughs> unities. So my space hippie should be here in the next 10 days. So I'm excited about that. Nice. How about you, Mike? What nice. are you rocking? What are you copping? Yeah, man. So what I'm rocking is this beautiful <laughs> retro of the answer four. Uh, shout out to the Reebok fam who sent this over, and holy crap, this is such a you know 180 switch from the was it the 2014 retro? I had that and it felt like just a brick on foot. This one immediately comfortable. As soon as I put them on, I just didn't take them off. I went and ran errands, came back, and I was like, I can wear this shoe on a daily basis. It's not like a 90s basketball shoe where you just want to like uh, early 2000s basketball shoe where you're done. So this is solid. Um, you know, Roy mentioned my. The, the saga of the Cosmic Unity has come to an end, and I came out on top because said store, which I still will not name, has still just been non like co like like coherent about the fact that they sent me this shoe and they refunded me. So, I mean, I give Nike a bunch of money. I feel like I could win one, right? Yeah. Like, so it sounds terrible, but I'm like, I should be able to win one, and like I paid them originally, they just gave it back. But uh, uh, that feels like a sneakers one to me, so that's how I would convert that. Yeah, since I don't get those, I'll take whatever I can get. <laughs> uh, yeah. and then what I'm looking to cop, I mean, something I don't, I don't want to give too much away. We're going to talk about it later, but definitely this ALD 
Um, New Balance 550. I don't care what color. They're they're both legit. I missed out on the first drop. I missed out on the, the, the GR drop. Like, I just can't get the shoe. And I'm not paying over retail. So that's that's what's on my list right now. How about you, Nick? Nice. Uh, so, rocking. I uh, pulled out a little something different today. Got the uh, oh, yes. infrared air trainer ones. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Assume you can oh, see we can that. see yeah, it. I we sold mine years ago, and I'm so uh, sad seeing them now. Yeah, I mean, I don't wear them very often because they're kind of a little snug, but yeah. it's just a beautiful colorway. And I was like, "All right, today's a good day. Like 72 and sunny. I can't complain. If I shoe. if I am complaining, then you know it's my own damn fault, right?" So that was definitely. Uh, it, it's one of those shoes where like I forget about it. It goes away for months, maybe even year plus. And then it's yeah. like, oh man, this shoe is so nice, so nice. But um, Dang. yeah, I, I don't know, man. The, the infrared ninety, the infrared colorway, you know, color combo for me is always like, always good. Like I almost Ooh. never don't, you know, like doesn't matter the shoe, that color looks good to me, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as copping, uh, well, by the time you listen to this, I will either be ecstatic or extremely disappointed because the adidas neighborhood undefeated zx 8000s are uh i mean here let's just show you how nerdy about neighborhood i am i have like a neighborhood is that a mouse it's, pad? A, it's a mouse pad from yeah. like oh that's dope like 2000 something like it's probably 20 years old right absolutely nothing wrong like with that. just nothing wrong with that at it's all it's disgusting it's it's gross like it really just it should be replaced but is it Y2K friendly? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I I love that brand and and like, I mean a ZX eight thousand just like black with a gum bottom or white with a gum bottom, with that like ballistic material on it. Oh man, it's so chef's good. kiss. Like I don't even know how to. I can't even handle it. So um, that's definitely <laughs> yeah, like hook your boy up. Yeah, your boy I'll up help him out. Notes. Yeah, come on. Cause it's a good one. I will say this though, Nick. And you probably noticed this because you were able to get the the Bape from that collection, right? The Bape under Yeah, I got the black one, yeah. Yeah, just if you don't get it, I keep an eye out because even yeah. the Bapes have not reached over 200 bucks. I told yep. you, I, I've been posting about it recently because I'm trying to collect that whole pack now. They've mm -hmm. not, there's only maybe I think the, the Lego one is kind of expensive for some reason, but everything else has had a really decent cost. Yeah. And I'm just trying to eat them up before like two, three years from now, people figure them out. Yep. Yeah, and that, and that, I mean the eight thousand is is like absolutely one of my favorite shoes. I have a ton of pairs of that shoe. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. This orange shoe back here is actually the eight, the original AZX series mm -hmm. from Adidas. Okay. Um, that's the undefeated collab from that. Like, I don't know when that was, two thousand eight or something. Yeah, I remember that one. Um, and I got, I did grab like the black vape one. I didn't get the green one, but. Um, my buddy Rob, shout out to Rob. Like he, uh, actually texts, I, I, we have like a group chat and like, I sent the pictures and I was like, so, you know, how hard is this going to be to get? Like, I'm definitely going to need this because they're, <laughs> they're big undefeated like supporters yeah. in the group. And, uh, he said that you can actually, if you want to check with the stores, you might even be able to get this, that Bape ZX 8000 in store, potentially even for a discount. Because they Ooh. have been marking some stuff down. So wait, um, it's still sitting at undefeated. Apparently so. Yeah, it's like not on the website, but they have them in store. So I could mail so, order. Sorry, I'm getting really excited right now because I'm going to call it right now. Should we call it twenty? Let's call it twenty second time now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oof. Woo! Because I'm I definitely will try to call them tomorrow. I'll be like, hey guys, like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, if, it, I don't know if they do phone orders, but like we could always find somebody in the Discord to to head over to to one of the locations and see if they have them because i mean I, I i saw them on the site as recently as like maybe a month ago or you know like yeah probably about a month ago where i would have yeah. thought they would have sold out but they were still up there in a couple of sizes no no like 12 or 13 and no i want to say like nine and a half and ten or something like that if i can't oh, remember well, exactly but i mean i need a 10 but like but yeah, like I mean, it, it's it's totally possible they still have them in store, so worth checking. But um, yeah, I mean, I think there's just a lot of good stuff. Like it's it's also like exciting 
I don't know, like it's it's one of those things where I'm excited for sneakers again because it's the weather's getting better and yes to wear yeah. like nicer shoes and not have to worry about them getting destroyed and like to me it's just like a good time of year to be a sneaker person. So but um speaking of sneaker people, did we have any reviews to read this this week? We did not have a review, but we did see that there was an extra rating of a five star on Audible. So thank you. I will now try to come up with a quick five star review, which I think the person was thinking about as they gave us that rating. <laughs> sneaker news is, or sneaker history rather, is the best podcast in the world. It doesn't matter if it's sneakers, wings, pop culture. These guys do it all, and I can't wait to hear what they have next. See, very generic, very thoughtful, but thank you again for those five stars, and we will continue to ask. Please give us reviews on your favorite medium because it helps us out. It gives us the new visibility, the new audiences, which ultimately allows us to continue to do this for free as we are. So thank you again, <laughs> whoever sent in that five-star rating. Yes, sir. Appreciate all beautifully those. said. Beautifully said. We did add some new people to the Discord in this last week. So welcome to all the new people that joined the Discord. Uh, I don't know how many people exactly are in there now. I'll have to no. check on that after after we record here. But um, it's, it's nice to see some some new faces. And some new energy and some, uh, you know, I think some some potential new, uh, there's always some great debates. I don't know if you guys yes. have, have seen some of these, uh, <laughs> you know, it, the, the beauty of sneakers is that we can all uh, agree to disagree on, on any given moment, on any oh, given yeah. pair of shoes. So I'm excited to see uh, more people in there. And, and, you know, if you're interested in joining the Discord, head over to patreon.com slash sneaker history. That'll get you in with a link to the Discord. and um yeah i mean there's raffles in there from from our friends at soul retrieval soul retriever um from basically anywhere i mean like i was scrolling through today trying to find you know some of those uh those gulf dunks just oh. just in case there was a raffle that i could get into nick ccs um, or i guess i'll tell you now because this will air after the <laughs> fact but friday on the okay. uh 15th or the 16th at 7 ccs's instagram account all right, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. There was I mean, a, uh... it's, it's crazy, too, because, like, there's so many SB accounts in those raffles. Yeah. Like, I'm just blown away by, like, how many places you can enter. And a lot of them are, like, you know, some of them are, like, pick up in store. Some of them are, like, ship within the, within the state or whatever. But a lot of them are, like, global. Like, it's wild to me that there's so many people that you could actually enter to win some of these. Yeah, dude. Not win, but like purchase. You know, get I need a some to pink pigs. Them. Someone can get. I don't even want like. The I know it's not gonna happen. Dunks. The pink yeah. dunks, like, what's up? Like, if anybody out there who doesn't want them, which is kind of a stupid statement, because if you buy them for a hundred bucks, you can make six hundred. I mean, I, I don't blame you, but if you feel <laughs> generous when I'm selling to me at retail. <laughs> yeah. If you do that, Mike will give you his spot for one future episode of Sneaker History. Yeah, just trying to sweeten the pot. Just yeah, trying dude. to sweeten the pot. I, I got you. Like, what you need? <laughs> like, what are you copying? And what are you rocking, fellow listener? Like, yeah. you get to have that ten minutes of fame. Yo, I will. We'll set you up right. <laughs> oh man! So we we've got a uh, we got some interesting topics to go through. I don't know. Like, where do you guys want to start? There's lots of lots of opportunity here. Um, uh, I mean. You want to start with the – we can start with the Jordan 3, the Alma Manier, which I don't know if I'm ever saying that right, but since it's releasing, what, this week, huh? The raffle starts this weekend. I think they're going to be releasing on that following weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Like, so, was that the 27th or 26th, whatever? I don't know what that is. I believe it's the 27th, but, yeah, Mike, walk us through that process that you were kind of teaching us about in the pre-show meeting. Yeah. With the so, women only, ladies' night. Ladies' night. That's what it is. So, basically – uh James Whitner at uh, Amo Manier, the, the Whitaker Group, Social Status, all that. He has another collaboration on the way, which I'm sure everyone knows about. I'm kind of preaching to the choir at this point if you're listening to this podcast. But it is the Raised by Women's Jordan 3, which is a beautiful looking sneaker. Uh, and he really wants this to, it's a women's only release, but it's an extended sizes. But just kind of knowing the climate of how sneakers are purchased lately, uh, he is really looking to make sure that women get their, their fair shake on this one. But at the same time, the women that can get it are, they're such a small area that kind of sucks because there's only going to be a couple cities that get them. And so this is kind of how it goes, just kind of jump into it. 
So there's women's early access. From 414 to 417, strictly women will be able to enter the draw. But it only can be done in store. They have to make an appointment to go into an Alma Manier store. And the point must be set through a website. So you can't call in. You can't walk in. It has to be set through a website. So you have to have your set time frame. You have to get there at that particular time. So there's one entry per person. But just because you have an entry, of course, doesn't mean you get the shoe. So it's raffle style. Now, the winners will be um, selected before 421. But they're only eligible at three stores. And they're going to be in Atlanta, D.C., and Houston which the sample size of people that I noticed three very large cities, but it is got is that's very, that's a very small sample size. Now, with that being said, I, I like the fact that they're trying to combat the resale market by trying to make sure that women can get them first because they were intended for women. Um, and from what I've learned from James's interview with Matt Welty on complex, I want to say last week, really broke down the shoe and what they're trying to do. He really wants to, again, combat the resale market, combat bots by making sure that when people come to buy this shoe, and he, they're going to combat, do whatever they do on the, the, the internet side, try to make sure only one entry. If, he's saying that, that if there's any entries with the same address, I'm, automatically all of them are canceled, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, that's pretty cool that they're going to be able to monitor that. But as you go in, if you're a woman buying a shoe, you have to buy the size that's on your foot. There looks like they're going to be checking your shoes. Which kind of sucks because I was like, oh, maybe I can send my wife out there to get a pair for me. But she wears a women's seven. I would be an 11 and a half. They're like, ma'am, chill out. That wouldn't work. So, I mean, I again, I respect the fact that they're trying to get women their sneakers first. I personally had bad experiences with this store on multiple occasions, social status. So I'm like, they can kind of just, you know, kick rocks. But to everybody out there who wants them, women, go out there and get them because you guys deserve a good shoe. Uh, instead of having to deal with the scraps that, unfortunately, us men try to leave behind because we're kind of greedy. So please enjoy this shoe. I hope you all, everyone who wants it, gets it. So what do you, what do you guys I mean, you, think about you, it? I mean, I, I think you you should just, you know, do what we did when we were kids, you know, like <laughs> give your wife like 12 pairs of socks, give her a pair of your shoes. Th thought about that. And send her Mike. in. You know, Mike, <laughs> you pregnant? What is a symptom of pregnancy? Swollen I know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Like, look, yeah. here's all my old elite socks. Throw all pairs of these on. They're gonna get you up to at least a size nine and a half. All right, you got a little room to breathe. <laughs> just, just slapping them bad boys around out to the store. <laughs> Here, here's the other thing. Get her a cane because pregnancy and cane. Do you really want to be the store that says no, ma'am? You can't buy these because your feet aren't the size. She's like, caring. Those shoes are for two, even three, if you want to put the actual recipient of said pair. So, Mike, I think <laughs> everything's in play. You just have to be creative. Like, whatever the footwear equivalent is of getting four kids on top of each other's shoulders wearing a trench coat? trench coat. Oh, 100%. Here, go for it. That's, this, that's pretty much what's going to happen here. Like, look, okay, I need you to do, you got to, you know, you already got the, the, the pregnant walk. It's cool. They're not going to ask yeah. you too many questions because they do, they look like a dick. Like, don't, <laughs> don't ask my wife any questions. Yeah, it's it's a. Uh, I mean, I think it's a, it's it's a step in the right direction. It's so impossible to to do, yeah, any to to really like release shoes in any like hundred percent foolproof way at this point, right? There's just mm -hmm. too many ways around it. I actually like the idea of. I love that they're that they're trying to to give women the chance to get it first. Mm -hmm. I was when I saw that all that stuff popped up in the Discord. Like when, when it loaded for the raffles, it was like, oh, okay. Like I didn't realize that you had to get it in store. Like, I mean, I think the shoe's really nicely done. I would buy it if I could, but I'm not going to like probably put much effort into getting a pair. Um, yeah. But I do have to say like the, at least the thought of trying to like give women access to this first, but then also like, you know, doing the raffle after or doing the online release after like, you know, like mixing it up and, and like divvying it up like that is a cool way to at least give people a few chances, you know, compared to just the normal, like here it is and it's gone and you missed it experience that most of us yeah. have with almost every release nowadays. So uh, props yeah. to them for that. I mean, I don't have any, any like personal connections with, with those shops at all. Um, you know, I listened to James on, uh, you know, 
like the hype beast podcast a couple years back and he seemed like a really kind of stand up dude and has like a lot of cool ideas and he seems to be executing on a lot of things in really interesting ways that I think, uh, you know, I think that like, you know, this release aside, like I, you know, he's somebody that I kind of like definitely watch as like someone who, at least as somebody who's never met him, it, it, the perception to me is that he has a finger on the pulse of like what's going on and he's, yeah. you know, actively trying to be a part of it and pushing the change that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So props to him for that. Yeah. I mean, I think, like you said, it's nice to do something like this because there is no foolproof solution. Like you both have said, I guess my question is what happens to the extended size runs? Because unless I don't have my finger on the pulse of the Houston demographics, I'm assuming all those extended size runs are just going to hang back for the more general raffle. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. So they're going to do the women's first, then they're going to do the general public. I guess that's, I don't know if that's the right size wording, but everyone else basically. So yep. once those women claim their pairs, they're going to release them. Uh, I mean, I've seen them at a few other stores as well. Like I places I keep my eye on are like Livestock Canada. They're going to get them as well. I mean, I'm sure a lot of the places are. Uh, I think Sneaker Politics will be getting them. But those are, I don't know if they're, they don't think they have the same protocol. So they're going to just go kind of, hey, Wild West, here's your, here's your raffle or here's your entry and good luck. But I mean, it's going to be it's another one of those shoes. Just like, it, it reminds me almost of that, not, not the look, but just the release and everything reminds me of the uh, off-white Jordan 4 for women, like that tan one from last year. I feel like it's going to be the same experience almost Sure. to where it's just going to be just a crap show out there. Well, here's hoping nobody gets crap on them as they get these shoes. Yeah, right? Like, no one fight. I've been seeing more fights lately. Y'all chill out. Like, it ain't worth it. Yeah. I mean, that's something, like, we didn't talk about it before we started. But, man, if I could just go on a little rant here. You don't have to post people fighting on your page so if stupid. you're a sneaker account. Like, nobody needs to see that stuff. Nobody needs to spread that stuff. Nobody needs to encourage that type of behavior. Like... I am like so frustrated when I see that stuff just mm -hmm. go everywhere because like that is not something that we want to see. Right. Like we just mm -hmm. like that doesn't do any good for anyone. It, it makes, it makes it more difficult to work in the industry because you see that people see that on the internet, on the news. And all of a yeah. sudden now, like if you're into sneakers, you're a part of this group of people that is acting, acting ignorant in the mall. Yeah. And like, that's not how it is. And I don't, I just, I wish that some of these accounts would just forego whatever few thousand clicks they're going to get from that post or whatever it is. And just like have a little internal conversation and be like, is this a decent thing to do? Am I yeah. a decent human being for posting this message on the internet? Because if you can't answer that clearly as yes, and you have any oh, hesitation, really? It's not worth posting it. Like, it's just not worth it. And, like, to see that go everywhere and, like, it's just so disappointing to me when, like, it's hard enough to just be, for me, it's hard enough to just pay attention to sneakers when there's fucked up shit in the world happening every fucking day. Mm -hmm. And I'm on the internet, like, trying to simultaneously amplify messages that I think should be amplified and make the sneaker world a better place in between. So when I'm not doing the things that I would say are more important, like, and then to see that come up in the sneaker thing and, and all over, right? Because then it hits in the, in your feed and then it hits in your discover page. And then it's like, you know, millions of tweets and like, this is just funny, like, man. don't do it. Like it doesn't <laughs> do any good for anyone. I just uh -huh. like, if you have an account, I just like, you can send it to me and trash talk me for whatever amount of characters Instagram will let me, mm -hmm. I will read every word and I will respond back to you. If that's something that you need to have as like recognition for you posting this shitty thing on the internet, but like, there's just no value in that. So why do it? Yeah. No, I don't understand it. Like, like, I feel like it's gotten worse. Like I haven't seen many like, fights or like scuffles, whatever you want to call them in such a long time. But I feel like since 
you know, things started opening back up again. But people just kind of forgot. Like, like we reverted back to 2001 cool gray releases. Like, I have no idea what's going on. There's no vaccine for being a dumbass. And Wish if you want to be the one that <laughs> catch, yeah. if you want to be the one that catches hands because of a goddamn pair of Toro Bravo fives, more power to you. But at the same time, the this is what I will say. The best piece of advice I ever got working at Nike was at the end of the day, we just make shirts and shoes. We have to take that mantra in every time we set foot in a foot locker, every time we try on sneakers or every time we do whatever raffle there is, because you know what? There's a 10% likelihood if that we're going to get it and it's going to bring us joy in the moment, mm -hmm. but long-term will it bring you joy? And conversely, if you lose, it should not ruin your day. And I'm similar to Nick. If you want to message me and tell me how off base I am because I don't understand this and yep. sneakers are this, that, and the other, go for it. I'm probably going to best you in a contest of wills just because I'm built that way. I'm telling you not to try any of us, but there's no need for this. We talked about this in a recent episode that depending on when you listen to this, you may not, may or may not have heard, but I'm tired of being vilified as an industry, as a culture, as a subgroup, whatever you want to call it. We are nice people. We celebrate our wins, we commiserate with our losses, and that's what our industry and that's what our culture should be. And let's do better. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. Yep. Yep. I agree. I agree. Well said. I mean, yeah, it's, man, it's just, it's tough all to see. All right. You know what? Let's, let's pivot a little because there was <laughs> something that brought us all a little bit of joy in our pre show <laughs> meeting, and that was the, and I'm, a terrible French speaker, so I'll let one of these two distinguished gentlemen do the actual pronunciation. But New Balance has this really interesting capsule coming out on Friday, so who wants to talk to me about it? Because I still can't pronounce it. I'll give you the name. Was it Emilion Dior? I took like Magnifique. eight years of French, so that's the only reason Magnifique. I got this. And I probably Magnifique. still had it wrong. Magnifique. I mean, I just say ALD. Yeah, I think most cool. people do, because I don't want to sound stupid like AL ALD, right? Like I'm going to call it ALD. All has <laughs> not to be confused with all dough. That's a different shoe. Different no, no, store. no, not, not at all. But I think <laughs> as we were chatting, the first thing we realized was there was a beautiful commercial. And what a mm -hmm. sentence that is, because we haven't had a conversation like this in God knows how long from a sneaker perspective. There was a commercial that I think we kind of d agreed upon as a group was Wes Anderson's interpretation of the Nike freestyle basketball ad from 2001. Yeah. And there are some common links between the two, because I think we see Jason Williams in there, who was a pivotal part in both spots. But there's just something about the ambiance and the vibe and just the overall feel of this that got all three of us hyped. And I think, Mike, you were mentioning that there's not only a footwear component, but there's apparel in the yeah. capsule that's also dropping. And everything looks fire, right? Oh, dude, I want all of it. I can't afford anything but the shoes, probably, but I want all of it. <laughs> It's so nice. It's just like what they've done is really took the best of both worlds of, you know, current athleisure wear. Like you have the sweatsuits, track suits, but then they're bringing back some of the old style. Like I was telling you earlier, Rowan, I love the short sleeve warm up, like the old style NBA uh, warm up. Oh my God, a green one just looks so good. But it's just a whole thing. Like I, I just, they put it all together so well. You have the commercial, you have, the product you have the personalities in there and i haven't smiled watching it like anything about sneakers really like media wise in a while because there's a bunch of nonsense that's out there it's like like nick say it's a bunch of fights and stupid memes that we see 90 percent of the time but i literally watched this commercial like five times in a row because it just literally like kind of like brightened my my moment of just like man this is a good commercial it just brought me back to that nike freestyle and then of course you have jason wills in there that just connects like everything so you know, i loved it yeah, I thought I thought the commercial is dope. I mean, I think that the the whole vibe of what Teddy Santis has done and like the ALD stuff has been like so dope. It's like super kind of like it's like old school but fresh mm -hmm. at, at the same time. Um and I think it's it's interesting too because like the timing and like the trends and all that stuff, right? Like the you know, I think of like the polo shirts and and uh you know boat shoes and that kind of stuff hasn't it hasn't been trendy for quite a while yeah. but it's it's cool to see like a new spin on it but that same kind of level of like i don't know like it, it's like 
I don't want to call it elegant because that's like not the right word for it, but it's like elevated, right? It's like an elevated, like, it's like, I, I would, I would relate it to like what polo and polo sport was for me mm -hmm. in the late nineties. Sure. Um, you know, trying to buy, I mean, I just sent a picture to a friend like of a, a box of polo stuff in my, that I have in the garage. Like, you know, back in the day, it was like, I get that same vibe from this, from this ALD stuff where it's like, you want to just, it just like looks fresh and clean and you want to be a part of it. And like the stories and like the emotion that's, that is behind those stories, whether it's the Jason Williams or Ray for Alston, like, you know, mm -hmm. even the, the Charles Oakley at the end, like there's just like all these like moving pieces that like we probably associate that we don't even think about associating with mm -hmm. this whole thing. And like the fact that you can watch that, have all of those thoughts, get excited about it. You almost don't even have to know that it's New Balance to yeah. actually appreciate it. And that to me is like job well done to Teddy and, and the team of people that, that, that did that. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, uh, I guess we'll get into it a little bit, but like, go ahead, Roy. What do you think of this one? No, I, I will say it's elegant. Hell, I'll call it sophistication. And that's not something we usually attribute to basketball warm up stuff. And I think this mantra of international friendship through basketball is that perfect rallying point for this because that is what's the best quality about this game is the fact that on any given night we watch whatever professional team that we support in mike's case it's once again the beautiful san antonio spurs there is always this international flavor where the point guard's from france who kicks it to the swingman who's from argentina who throws it into the post to the gentleman from saint vincent islands and that is basketball in the modern society is the fact that it truly is the best metaphor for the American dream because you have immigrants running all over the all over the floor. And like Hamilton said, immigrants get the job done. And that's kind of what this commercial did as well, because of the fact that it captures a feeling that's so hard for us to quantify and explain to you as a listener, where all we can say is, hey, just take two minutes of your time. We'll include the link in our show notes and just watch it. And if it doesn't put a smile on your face reach out to us because then we'll have to have a talk about what makes you smile because <laughs> there is joy to this. There is no sort of previous affiliation or bias that this manipulates. It's just watching people play a game that we all clearly love and talk about it. And that's all I can say. So, I mean, I, I know I'm kind of rambling a bit and I'm kind of gushing because that's what good commercials get you to do. Not only do they get you to buy the product, but ultimately at the end of the day, they get you to play the sport that the product you've bought supplements. So that's all I'll say. Yeah. And you think about it, it took two more, like you guys said, so it made me think of a, a Kanye lyric when you guys said the like sophisticated, because I yes. honestly think it is because it's a sophistication of, this is just beautifully, like beautiful colors, beautiful cinematography, and put it with streetwear, sportwear, which some people think are maybe kind of ignorant. And the, the line was, you know, sophisticated ignorance, right? My curses in cursive. That literally yes. was that, like, right there. Because you're getting, like, if you're watching, like, oh, man, that's just nice. And you look at, oh, that's, that's sportswear? Like, yeah. You just blur the line right there, and you have built an audience. Like, you've captured an audience. If that runs on TV, like, during – you know, prime time, you know, you're sitting home with your family watching. You're like, oh, man, you know, you got kid knowing what it is. You got mom and dad like, oh, that's kind of nice. Like you, you can meld those two worlds because you did so much with that commercial. Now, my biggest regret is they debuted this almost too early because we don't have any substantial basketball games mm -hmm. that are playing right now. If this and granted, like I said, this is just an armchair psychologist perspective. Maybe they know exactly what we're doing and they're going to get the results that they want, regardless of what I have to say. But this would have been great as one of those same 15 commercials you see during the NBA playoffs, because that just hammers home the fact that we need to make basketball commercials great again, because that's kind of the hidden layer of being a fan because all three of us have had that moment where we either taped that Nike freestyle ad directly off the game, or we went to our foot locker and bought whatever merchandise we needed to do to get the promo video as well. And like I said, I'm going to be rooting for ALD and New Balance to make sure all of this stuff sells out. I hope that it's not mostly through resellers or bots, but it's a beautiful campaign that deserves to be celebrated and it's well worth your time. Yeah, totally agree. And I think too, like it's it's interesting, you know, we didn't talk much about it when it was announced, but partially that's probably to my fault. Um, but Teddy Santos was announced as like creative director for New Balance, I think maybe a month ago now. And I, 
I personally just like disagree with making, you know, uh, let's say a celebrity or influencer, a creative director, yeah. because in my experience, that title internally in an organization is extremely important. And those Very people much. set the tone for how people work within the organization. So, it, you know, not to take away from the value that he brings, because obviously he is 100% capable of being the creative director of New Balance. He's 100% successful with his ALD stuff. Like, you know, I, I think that it's less about him being announced for me and more about like what happens to the actual creative director or potentially with most organizations, multiple creative directors emotionally when some random person who, you know, at least in this case, Teddy is like somebody who's collaborated, collaborated with the brand multiple times. But like what happens to to their self-confidence when you bring in an outside person and say, this is the new person that's going to, you know, publicly be, you know, exalted as the, you know, the, the, the kind of visionary for our brand. Yeah. You do the hard work while this person gets all the, the, the praise for it, basically. Yeah. It's a really awkward thing to me. And I, I don't know how that trend started, but, you know, we've seen celebrities and athletes as creative directors for, you know, hundreds of companies now over the past, mm -hmm. like 10 to 15 years where you've never really seen like what actions came from those people, right? Like it's more just like a talking point, kind of like, you know, JG. Nike recycling shoes and saying that it's, you know, to make, uh, make their, uh, sustainability goals, you know, better or whatever. So I don't know. It's yeah. an interesting piece of this conversation. No, I, I, too. That's, that's a good topic because actually one of like, for me, the reason I try to get my hand in everything I can do when it comes to like everything we do with sneaker history and everything I do like on the side is because that's one of my end goals. I want to be a correct creative director for a company or a brand because that's just how my mind works. That's what I want to do. But it sucks when you see people like I always use Jay-Z as an example because I, I don't know what he did for Puma besides, you know, put a slap a pair of Pumas on, jump on a Puma jet and make it cool. That's, that's dope. I mean, make him a brand ambassador because I swear not three weeks ago, I saw him wearing a pair of Union 4s, and I'm like, it was just like a you know, three-year contract just to get you guys a good pump up, but there's people out there who are really invested in the creative process, and I'm not saying some of these celebrities aren't, because there's some of them out there, like, I really respect, uh, what was like, like, what's it, like, ASAP Ferg. The guy is very, like, a brilliant guy, very creative. I think he went to college for design. Someone like that who has the background... That is, that's dope. Or someone who just has a passion to learn. Like Kanye didn't just say, I want to be a creative director. I want to go and learn. He went like intern with these brands to, to learn. That makes sense. I just don't understand. Just, hey, um, you, Rihanna, you're going to be creative director just because you're popular right now. Or Jay-Z or whoever. Sorry, Rock Nation. Don't mean to just name everybody in your roster. But that's <laughs> just kind of, the, the people really popped up in my head. And it, it does suck because... The people out here doing like good work aren't getting noticed. So, like, I would love to see Mosh as a creative director somewhere because he do create his own shoe, which is selling out, and he has such good ideas. His mind works a certain way with shoes. Like, why is he not a part of Nike as a creative director or Adidas or you know Reebok, whatever? Just pick a place. It's even more interesting when you think about like, I think, I think the the weirder part of the Teddy Santis creative director situation is I would assume that this means that ALD has to work exclusively with New Balance for probably the next couple of years or whatever that looks like, right? I would Which, have to think so. I I just don't know that that's like a lucrative choice for either side, right? I mean, I don't think that Teddy will, you know, I don't think he's going to fall off or anything. I don't know that like it's it's beneficial for his brand and personal brand to yeah. be attached to New Balance for, you know, let's say three years or whatever it ends up being. Because yeah. a lot of times the, the beauty of these types of creators, right? I look at like him and, and you know, maybe Ronnie Feig and like mm -hmm. the way that they navigate all of the partnerships and all of the collaborations is actually mm -hmm. what is most impressive to me because yeah. it takes a lot to move in and out of a company, whether that's a contract worker or consultant or, you know, 
collaborator, it's 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 not easy to do. Yeah, and it's a lot. Props to, props to those guys doing it, but it, it's also like, man, like is this gonna end up hurting you in the long run? Mm-hmm. But I mean, I think I think New Balance is is you know props to them for trying all these different things, right? Like, yeah. um, I guess like next up to um they are officially the school well, i guess like the uh, official the like outfit the official apparel outfitter provider. yeah, yeah apparel go. and footwear right for yes. for boston college which um i don't know that was that's like unexpected for me i think it's dope i think it's super dope and i hope that it works out um is that the first that school totally that unexpected. new balance was ever outfitted because i was looking me and ro were talking i don't know of any other school that New Balance has been outfitting as of yet. Uh, you know, probably on the running side they have, but okay. never as a full like, you know, full athletics program, which that's okay. what it seems to be on this one. Yeah. So, um, yeah. No, I think it goes to something you guys kind of alluded to. Sorry, I had to step away, but yeah. there is a certain strength to be as nimble when you're a. I hate using the word small, but if we're comparing them to the big wigs of Adidas and Nike, New Balance is relatively smaller. So yeah. they can get creative, and I think they're using their powers for good, and they're trying out things. And put it this way, Boston College now has announced a 10-year deal with New Balance to outfit 30 out of the 31 varsity teams, every team except for football. So football is still whoever their incumbent sponsor is, but Under why Armour. not take that shot? Because it gives them a visibility and more importantly, it gives a visibility to the school through its athletes. And I think that's a job well done. And correct me if I'm wrong, isn't New Balance also based out of New England? So it's a right. local play as well because yep. they're outfitting a local college, which can only strengthen their civic resolve to that region even more. Yep. That's kind of what I thought. I was like, oh, that's smart. Play, play at home first, see if it works out. And then... Uh... See what happens. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the the local aspect of it is completely underappreciated, right? Like, we've gotten to like so big with sneakers and partnerships, and it's all global, and like sell massive numbers and all this stuff. But like, you know, this this is like uh, what from two thousand? No, like ninety. It's a big old shoe. <laughs> like even look in the frame. <laughs> So, yeah, it's a, it's a size 15. This is like the original. Uh, this is actually a shoe worn by a guy named Tyler Roche, played for Boston College Golden Eagles when Reebok was the sponsor. So um, I think, um, what was it? Probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago, uh, you know, Mike Packer and Packer Shoes recreated this as a, a was it St. Anthony's? I think is the high school that has the same colors there. Oh, okay. um, and they, re- they actually released this pair. So this is actually like a further back retro. Um, I can't remember exactly when it's from, and I don't think the date is still on here because the tags are a little worn, but yeah, no date on there, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, one of the crazier uh, shoes in my collection. And, you know, to think of like, that's the last time I think Boston College was relevant in sneakers because unfortunately like Under Armour just like they just don't live up to it when it comes to the footwear side of these big deals. And I think like the the colleges are finally kind of coming around to that. And that's why you're seeing Under Armour lose a lot of the opportunities that they've had. You know, I mean, I think that, you know, it's kind of, All's fair in love and war, I guess, you know, like yeah. just step up to the plate and, and get some better footwear designs. Um, you know, they've had some we'll incredibly talented people at Under Armour and still haven't been able to, you know, get over that hurdle of of themselves, basically. So yeah. I don't know. Was it UCLA they lost? Who who they lose recently? That they're I think it was UCLA. I didn't even know yeah. they were at UCLA. I really thought there was an Adidas school. Yeah. I want to ask you guys both this because this is something that we've kind of seen in the NBA. But do you ever see or envision a scenario where we see a Chinese based company taking ownership over an entire school apparel and footwear? Like let's say Anta decides, you know what, we're going after Stanford, just hypothetically picking two brands out of a hat. Or are we still going to quote unquote protect these shores, so to speak, and make America great again through this sort of American companies only? That's a 
tough one for me because it would depend on how well a signature athlete from that school is doing in the NBA. So I say if Klay Thompson and going at, went out there and won, like, if he was Steph Curry. If Klay Thompson was Steph Curry, what school would he go to? I don't remember. Washington State. Okay. I think they would have a chance. But it has to be somebody out there. Like, I would not be surprised if sometime, somewhere down the road that Marquette, but they're Jordan, so that's kind of tough if they were into but, going Lee Ning because Dwayne Wade has really, like, expanded that brand. They put out – a fantastic product and it, it really rivals if not or eclipse some of the things that they play in now so it just depends because schools want that money and if their players like what they're playing in they're gonna get better players and that's what sucks because it all depends on like you can convince a kid to play the leaning school or you're gonna play convince a kid to play jordan brand school and unfortunately it's not about the program half the time most people want to play at UNC because you know, I'm like this dope PE like I'm gonna play that year to get the threes it's not about the program as much because they're trying to be in and out of there one year that's fair you yeah I think that's that? yeah I think it's a good point I mean I don't I don't think we're there yet to have like a, a leaning or an Anta or a 361 or one of those brands come into a school and and you know I mean if anything leaning is probably the closest Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, looking at like the, the easiest road for them to do that would be through Dwayne Wade, obviously going to Marquette and saying, Hey, you know, this is the legacy. This is where we're headed with it. How do we, you know, kind of carry this torch through a partnership? That would be a really hard sell. Yeah. I think for, you know, Marquette to, I'm pretty sure they're still a Jordan brand school. Yep. Right, because um, Jimmy Butler, isn't he also a Marquette athlete and Jordan mm-hmm. brand? Or did he yep. switch allegiances? No, he, he's leading now. He's yeah, out of the too. So so like there's there's like a there's a slight window opening there if mm-hmm. they wanted to, but it'd be a really hard sell because you know uh, it's just it's really tough for, for brands to to get in those conversations. Um especially being somebody who doesn't have like a, a, a really solid kind of cheesy term, but footprint in the U S right. Like yeah. yep. they, they, they have a lot of sneaker sneaker enthusiasts, you know, attention at times, mm-hmm. but they're not going to bring, they're not going to bring like new people to the school the way, like Mike said, a, a Jordan or a Nike or even an Adidas and, you know, that. So um, I don't, I do think that like, you know, the leaning stuff is supposed to be, I mean, assuming like we get back to some sort of normalcy, leaning stuff is supposed to be in Foot Locker soon again. It's online. So it's Foot Locker online. Now they have three models of the D-Wade 8 and then yeah. the All City 8, I think. Uh, only yep. thing is the price points are a little high because of the eight is 220, 250 bucks. I'm like, holy crap. Ooh. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And uh, the new model, the nine, oh, I think uh, I think Chris did a, a video on the nine, a couple different models. You can only get them on Amazon right now through the Leaning store. They are sick, but they are expensive and hard to get. Yep. So Leaning has to up the production that is sent to the U.S., build that get more people in their shoes before they can make that make that jump but honestly i would be okay with that i would love to see we i mean we take all international players why can't somebody like the brands get in on it anyway i mean nikes are made in vietnam and like we're not like we're like yep. taking something away from somebody so i would love to see more brands come in and get a chance because if they're putting out a good product i'm all about it why not now, one last thing that I was reading through some of the SBJ article about mm-hmm. that, this is an interesting wrinkle. SBJ notes that football uniforms could theoretically come from elsewhere and still be branded as New Balance, but there's also the distinct possibility mm-hmm. that Boston College could sign a football-specific deal with a company like Adidas. So that's interesting yeah. that I think they're giving the flexibility to probably the biggest sports program in BC from a complete complete neutral perspective because maybe there's some underlying BC cross-country knowledge that I just don't have. But if I think of a lot of these schools, 
I naturally gravitate towards basketball or and or football. So yeah. interesting that the quote unquote cash cow is still kind of free to do whatever it chooses to do. Yeah. Didn't surprise I mean, me. I mean, so I think much that might go ahead, Mike. Oh, go ahead. Nick. Oh, no, I'll say that was... surprised me so much because they don't, New Balance didn't have a, as far as I know, I don't think they have a big cleat football cleat presence. I know they're pretty solid in baseball, solid with track spikes, but that was probably part of the deal. Like, Hey, we'll do everything else, but we don't have a football brand to build on yet. So you guys, whatever. Yeah, I mean that's that's also a way that I I think that uh, something some place like Leaning or a brand like Leaning could step in, right? Like they could get in one of these like caveated deals where like they supply, you know, eighty percent of the the athletics or ninety percent, and you know they make almost everything at some level, mm-hmm. but most of that stuff never comes here. Um, so it'd be really difficult for them to, to you know, justify marketing the product through a school here in the states when you know most of the product is not available to people in the states. So, yeah. but you know, I think if the partnership with Foot Locker and the sales you know turn out in a positive way, and then like seeing that the roster is already aligned to that, it kind of makes sense that Marquette could be you know on the radar for at least testing it. Yeah. But I think if they were if they were to do it like you know the smartest way to do that in my opinion would be like hit basketball super hard, mm-hmm. like go over the top with it. Let somebody else take on all the rest of the stuff, and like like literally you know again not to be cheesy but like wow like literally wow people with your wow shoes right <laughs> like that's what it would be about if they wanted yeah. to be successful about it because they need something that's you know. They need something that is is bigger than, you know, Jimmy Butler and, and D. Wade, right? Yeah. Like they need something that could be, you know, I don't know, create some crazy wild uniforms or something. And, and you know, it's only exclusive at, at you know, Marquette or, you know, I don't know, in, in the Chicago area or in, the, you know, whatever that is that's like, you know, however you market that. Yeah. And then people are just like, wait, I didn't even know about this brand, right? So, yeah, um, yeah that'd no, be Especially the uniforms bit, that's a page right out of Nike and Oregon Ducks, right? Because for the longest time, we didn't know what the Oregon Ducks were. And then all of a sudden, you get bombarded with the uniforms. And then it's the whole look good, feel good, play good mantra come to life. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. yeah and I think, <clears throat> I think that, you know, like kind of looking at like the way – brands tend to align with people too like going back to the new balance and teddy santa's thing like there's an absolute like truth to what you were saying wrote about the nimbleness of of what you know it's still a you know a big company a big but corporate, very yeah. small compared to nike or adidas and if you can if you can find those successes and I, like it's it's super admirable about how new balance is going about all of these things where it's like, Hey, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go make basketball culture important again, off the court, you know, in the city, on the streets, because that's a missing piece, right? Like Mm -hmm. when was the last time we talked about actual, you know, pick up basketball, right? Like, you know, in a sense, like I would even say that like, it's probably been since, you know, like the Nike, you know, commercial that, that you know, the, yeah. the, the audio that we use underlying in our intro of this podcast is the commercial that we're referencing. Right. Mm-hmm. And like, that was the last time I think, you know, early to mid two thousands, maybe 2001, 2003, something like that. Like where basketball culture was so ingrained in everything we did, even if you weren't a, a, an NBA fan, right. It was just mm-hmm. like, we were taught to be aware of basketball culture by Nike. Yep. And in a sense, they backed off of that. And, you know, it's gotten to be this thing that we've talked about regularly on the podcast where like, how are you selling, you know, shoes if LeBron wears a different pair every day that's never available to the fans? Yep. How are you, you know, marketing these like, aside from, you know, the interest in the cosmic unity and, you know, the GT stuff coming? It's been a long time since Nike even appeared to care about like the you know, consumer level, blacktop level basketball player. And it opened up, you know, a lane for, for New Balance to step in there. And I think if they can 
if they can do that on one side, it's going to drive the energy that comes from this Boston College partnership. They'll get to develop with the students. It's like, you know, you you don't have the opportunity to develop performance basketball shoes with NBA talent throughout the season, right? Like they need yeah. something to play in that's reliable and you can't be taking chances on it. So if you're if you have access to the kids that are in school and in the neighborhood, just like you're saying about Oregon, right? Like I mean, I would even argue that Oregon wasn't even a relevant team for years yes. until Nike started dumping that energy and money into the programs, which then made people that were higher level skill want to come to Oregon to play. Yes, for the connection to Nike, you know, like you're going to turn that into a career at Nike if you don't make it as a pro. But like, even just for fans, it, it made it like, hey, like this is a team we want to pay attention to. And I personally believe that like, Fans can make a team great, even when the team is not truly great, right? Like that's like, to me, basketball is, you know, college basketball specifically is the quintessential example of that. You can take a a 15 or a 16 seed Gonzaga team from years back and the entire world wants them to win so badly that you can will a team that has no business being in the final four to a championship game. Like that's, that's what it's about. So, yep. But I think um, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap on that note because we've got the Kanye thing to talk about, but I think we could go a whole episode on Kanye at any given moment. But yes. I think it's also going to be a, a really interesting topic to jump into on the next episode. Um, but I did want to ask you guys, like in terms of a brand like Li Ning or, or you know, like being f- New Balance being like, taking on basketball culture kind of gives them a, an end to our hearts, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But Li Ning, being an outsider in the sense of like, they just don't have the market share and the commercial in your That's, face, yeah. you know, kind of space that we've kind of come to expect in sneakers. What would it take for you guys to like be proactively going after those shoes because Mike, you got a beautiful pair from them from Mm -hmm. Foot Locker, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you look at the, you look at the price on that. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I, I love some of their designs. Like I absolutely love some of their designs, but I won't pay for a LeBron shoe full price. So why would I pay for a (laughs) leaning shoe of a player that, you know, D Wade is up there for me. I, I would say he's, potentially as important to me as, as LeBron is mm-hmm. um, just from a, you know, purely being a little bit older, I guess. Yeah. Like I was a big fan of D Wade and sure. have some of his college PEs when he was wearing Converse. So like, you know, like I was into him, but the leaning stuff, it's still just like, dang, like so expensive. It's to hard me. to get. And it's expensive. It would take accessibility being able to, because there's when he released on the site, it's only like one pair. Like I, I was at the, D Way One, the D Way Four. I love those shoes, like, but they're just so hard to get, and they're the price point starts at like two hundred bucks. I'm like, well, I'm not. If I'm gonna get something two hundred dollars, I'm gonna get something more trusted because I w- I want the option to try something out. I am very big on actually having it in my hand and trying it out. Then I will give you my business. I will take a chance on you one time and give you my business. And just so happened, like, I was able to get the pair. I haven't had to play in them yet. I actually plan on. I found this outdoor court around uh around town i think i might go try a few of the basketball shoes i got out this weekend but i'm just it, it just has to be in stores it has to be somewhere accessible i can't just you can't give me like oh here's a small sample size here's what you could get but we have something better because that we're we're a model behind here they're, they're on footlockers.com they have eights when they're selling yeah. nines in china i'm like i want the nine why am i paying 250 for the eight when the nine's like drastically different and better so I need to have access to it without having to go through. I don't like me personally. I, I'm probably like the 0.1% per people, but I, honestly, I don't like buying stuff through Amazon so much because I just don't know what I'm going to get. Sometimes I feel like, and I don't want to sure. buy a shoe through Amazon, even though it's a, a technically their, their store. I'm like, uh, do I have to? Because prices actually, they can vary prices on Amazon. So this color is this much, which I've seen this size and this size are this much because of the lack of inventory. So I just need accessibility and a lower price point. And 
I'm down to try it. Like, I'm waiting for, honestly, like, don't want to go side tangent because we're finishing up, but I'm waiting to see what Puma does. They have to jump on a team eventually. So, oh, they've got their guy. I mean, LaMelo, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, he has a wrist injury, but to answer your question and hopefully go on a path a little bit different than Mike, because everything Mike said, completely agree with. At the end of the day, I should be able to put on a sneaker and try it on before I even commit to buying it. But we also live in this day and age today where we've conditioned ourselves to blind buy apparel. We've conditioned yeah. ourselves to blind buy footwear. Yeah. It's not necessarily the right thing, but it's a thing. I will say this. It is from a superficial level, get that rising star or get that rising team or taking it back all the way to Jordan one style, get this story. So if tomorrow Li Ning is banned in all of America and they have the tasteful campaign that lets us know it's banned, go for it then. Yep. Because I agree with Mike, because at the end of the day, ease and acquisition are probably the two biggest pillars we take for granted in the sneaker industry. And if they can at least correct that to be somewhere more in the middle, because right now to Mike's point, they are so hard to get. It is absurd. I have to be able to be Mandarin. I have to be able to realize what it is I'm buying. And that's just something you've already lost me in my wandering ADHD because I can say, mm -hmm. why bother with this shoe when I've got the GT cut coming up soon? Yeah. And I know everything about it. I can hold it in my hand. So I think that's the thing. Figure out who your LaMelo ball is. And that's where I'm really interested to see because my public perception is the Asian countries have kind of slowed down a bit because they haven't been able to identify that up and coming talent. Yeah. Everybody that they've seemingly picked up is at the end of their quote unquote sneaker prime or they're taking a flyer on and they're just hoping that they evolve into something. Now, case in point, let's make this full circle. New Balance and Jamal Murray. Like I think had they figured out that Jamal Murray type of player, mm -hmm. they could fly. Yeah. So because Kawhi yeah. can do it. Sorry, I, Kawhi's not going to sell a shoe for you. No, he can't do it by himself. Yeah. I think you have to almost have this Ocean's Eleven mentality when you're mm -hmm. cultivating a footwear presence. Like, get a stable or get a roster of guys. Give every single one of them one sort of characteristics. A quiet, uh, Kawhi is the quiet one or the muscle. And that works better when you have a brain, you have the smooth talker. Yep. But if it's just quiet by himself, nope. to your point, to Nick's point, to Robbie's point, my man is not charismatic in the traditional sense, and it's not going to move sneakers. And inevitably, whenever we're trying to buy New Balance, it's more us talking ourselves into buying this, hoping it's good, rather than just saying, yeah, I know this is good because of previous infrastructural changes. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Right on. Uh... Okay, I thought it, I thought it stopped recording there. A little freak out. Oh, like, keep, oh, that in, keep, keep that in the podcast. <laughs> keep <Yeah>. talking. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's a that's a great that's a great point to wrap on. Let us know what you think about leaning. Uh, you know, the New Balance stuff, the Puma stuff. I think like this is a great conversation because a lot of times we default to talk about the Nikes and the Adidas of the world, and I think to you know all the points we've made. There's a lot of cool shit going on that, you know, maybe is not getting enough exposure uh, like it like it potentially could. So let us know what you're paying attention to, what you thought of of, of our conversation. Um, if you're in the discord specifically, you know, like, you know, hit us up in the in the podcast channel um, with questions or comments or whatever. I'd love to kind of continue this conversation because I think it's going to be a really fun time to watch as we get back into a normal. We get back to some you know normal level of sports. The energy that the brands are going to bring is going to be, uh, it's its a long time coming and it's going to be really fun to watch. So hopefully um, we can all just kind of sit back and enjoy the ride. But anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in. My name is Nick Engvall. You can follow me at Nick Engvall on all the platforms. Uh, more importantly, follow Sneaker History and make sure you follow these guys. Guys, let them know how to find you. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. Find me on Sneaker History, of course. And you can also find me on YouTube at Mike Guillory. Roy, where can they find you, bud? I'm on Twitter at Rohizi, at Instagram, on Rohit M13. And yeah, thank you as always for listening. It yeah. makes us feel a lot better when we have these conversations towards an audience. <laughs> Most definitely. All right, well, we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. See you. See you guys. Hey, y'all. Nick Ingvall here. Before you take off, I want to thank you for listening to the Sneaker History Podcast. It really means a lot that you would spend a portion of your week hanging with us. And if there are any ways that we can improve the podcast for you, please leave us a review on iTunes. 
If you're looking for more content from the Sneaker History crew, head over to patreon.com slash sneaker history and join us for as little as five bucks a month. That also gets you access to our Discord group, which is a lot of fun. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We just started uploading our videos there now, so you can watch the video version of the pod and a lot more. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. It's a small gesture that can go a really long way to making somebody's day a little bit better. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Hey, everyone. This is Nick again. Before you take off, do us a solid and head over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a review. Give us a rating on Spotify and Amazon Music, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because we have even more video content coming soon. Speaking of new content, we have an amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts that hang out in our Sneaker History Discord on a daily basis. While sneakers is a connection point that brought us all together, we've all discovered countless shared passions that we have in common with each other. We recently launched a couple of new podcasts directly from our community. One of them is a Formula One podcast. If you're an F1 fan like me, the Exhaust Notes podcast is your weekly fix of Formula One fun. It's hosted by myself, Rohit Malhotra, and Todd Yates. New episodes drop every Tuesday. I've been wearing fitted hats for years and collecting my favorite teams since I was a little leaguer. It has been awesome to see so many new fans getting into fitteds in recent years. Crown and Stitch is our new talk show about fitted hats with Dexter, Keith, and myself, where we talk about fitted hats, snapbacks, throw in some obscure hats because we all kind of like some funky stuff once in a while, don't we? Copping, collecting, and so much more. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Hit the links in the show notes for this episode to give our new shows a listen and be on the lookout for more new podcasts dropping soon. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.